Good morning and welcome to the Hard Luck Show. I'm your certified host, Big Lux. I got my partner, the Indian, in the house. Yes, Chumahan. And I got old Blue Eyes himself running the sound. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. He's doing a real, like, he do, what, lately with Sean. Yeah, what is that? What is that? It's like, he don't elaborate on much. He's just like, that's right. And that's that. Yeah, you've kind of. That's that. It's brother, because I'm doing the fucking, oh, I'm, I'm just, pressing gonna, buttons over you here. You got a lot going on. I got a lot going you're on. You're not just, I'm, I'm the sound, you know what show. I got to say? Not only is he sound, right, oh, but nice. he's uh, the visual guy, too. Visual. Right. He's That's actually right. running the cameras right now. So every time we're talking to him and asking him questions, he's adjusting the sound levels and then checking which fucking camera he's recording from editing the show live, right? Right. Right, yeah. Gotcha. Definitely. Okay. All right, partner. Well, hey. I'm going to start saying uh, not only on sound, not only our audio, but video. Yeah. The sure. audio video genius. AV? AV. AV guy? ATM. <laughs> He's the ATM guy. He's the... <laughs> 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 hey, go an ATM on us, bro. <laughs> it doesn't take long for it to go <laughs> off the rails, does it? <laughs> <laughs> Doing a little ATM, it's, yeah, huh? ATM huh? <laughs> <laughs> When's the last time old oh, ATM on you? Yeah, yeah okay. oh, dude. But you know what's funny is is that uh, we put up the Lepke show uh, today. Yeah. Today, Friday, part one. And Lep- let me just say it before we get started. Oh, into us, I love you, Lepke. Yeah, w- this is all done with love, Lep. So don't try to get your supporters to write in a bunch of comments to to, to prop you up or anything. But we're just talking about the fallout, right? Because we put up the show. First of all, you know what? That show, okay. I had to ride with Lep in the car. What? After that show. Oh, you did because you took him home. I took Lep home all the way to Orange County, and it was a very long drive, bro. And was he talking the whole time? He had been here doing about two hours of self-defense talking. Didn't right. slow him down one bit for the ride home, brother. Right. I mean, he was going through everything. He was explaining to me about Schmidt. He was explaining right. to me about Bizarro. And eventually, you know, I mean... I I was running out of energy driving home. All right. I mean, <clears throat> I mean, yeah. I think that Chumon, me and you had talked a little bit about <laughs> recovering over the show, and I think or covering this show, right? You know, uh, looking back on it, and <clears throat> I think that for me and you, yeah. Being in recovery, yep. That you know, there's a there's a part of it that the message of recovery. I don't think me the integrity of sobriety or the message of recovery. The chance of that getting miscrewed on our watch. Am I going around the right lane? I don't know. I'm waiting for the rest of the. I sentence. think that. If, you know, I don't, I feel like, and I think you do too, that, that there is a message of recovery and sometimes it can get lost in, in different ways. And I think for that, sure, um, you know, I don't know, man. I, I just, I felt like uh, with that show, I know that Lefty was having a, a, a tough time in it because you could feel like you're getting picked on. You could feel like you don't want to start talking about the past and and maybe there's you know the hum the humility in it is hard to find or mm. but i my hopes were that in doing this show that we could probably that we could hopefully get to the bottom of some feelings and some um some maybe some reasons or and i felt like we weren't able to get there with lefty i was noticing definitely that you were a little frustrated with where we were going like 
how far we got with Lep. I had sensed the frustration from you at some point where it seemed like to you he wasn't answering questions for real. No. Uh, yeah, it was very frustrating. And, and, and wanting to keep going back to what he's got to tell us and, and um, what, um, what uh, what's the word that I'm looking for? Like, he, I don't, not opinions, but like he wanted to like give advice. He does that a lot. Right? And I felt like, man, we're putting the, the carriage before the horse. Like, let's back up a minute. Or to be very frank about it. Yeah. Let me just be frank, frank about it. Like, well, just slow down on all the advice, man. Like, you don't have the advice. Like, that's what I almost wanted to say. Like, stop with that shit, man. Right. And just tell us what happened and let us, maybe or our listeners, gain something from this. But instead, it was just this whole thing of, like, bouncing and, like, yeah, but check, this is what's happening now, and this is what I'm doing now. This is what it's like, I don't know, man. That's what part that was really frustrating me. A reason why I talked about your frustration first is because I think the audience and everybody knows I get frustrated. I'm already frustrated. Right. Like, that's not news to anybody. And in this scenario, I get frustrated because... Because, you know, I don't... So you have hopes, you laid out what your hopes for the show was. For me, I only hoped that we got the real story. That's all I was hoping. I didn't need to save anybody. I didn't need any... You know the code? I didn't need any of that shit. I just wanted the real story because, you know, every single one of our listeners has a relative or a friend or a homie like Big Let. That's just constantly cycling in and out. They're trying to reach out to him and be like, hey, man, like maybe what's different this time? And some people, I think. So for me, I just wanted something real. I didn't even I didn't expect. I mean, I've been dealing with Lepke now for how, how long on the show? I love the guy. I've given him advice on and off the air. Mm -hmm. He didn't listen to anything that I've ever told him. Mm. Right. So I don't even expect him to at this point, but I, I do want a real interaction. And what I, I sensed on that show from and dude, Marsola hit me up. Other mm. people hit me up. They were like, uh, that was a frustrating part. One was frustrating for them to listen to mm. people. were. Did anyone talk to you and say that was a frustrating show? I mean, yeah, I had different people getting on, hitting me up, telling me, man, what the fuck? Yeah, real frustrated. Right. And then saying, I could see your frustration right. and, and understand it. And I listened to the show twice. Did you really? Yeah. Why did you to listen it to it twice? Because I really wanted to get clear that nobody was picking on this guy. You did feel that perhaps maybe it was like a gang up or something. Yeah, I wanted to like, and I listened to it over twice, and in no way was it like that. I think it's you know? totally unfair. I mean, I'll no one will ever go with me on this, but I think it's totally unfair for Lepke at this stage to come in and feel like he's getting picked on when he's gone around and given everybody advice ad nauseum. Mm -hmm. Don't forget. This ad guy, nauseum. Ad nauseum, right? Don't forget, Lepke, right? Was ad nauseum. Ad fucking nauseum, oh. right? This guy was going around talking shit about Schmitty, Bizarro, throwing their shit out there, talking about how they, weren't a, they were eating Mike and Ike's and had hidden unhealthy food under the bed, laughed about that, would hit Schmitty with a fucking boobop stick. Right? That was all fun and games. And then he goes out with Schmidt. They're both out on a pookie run. Yeah. Right? He succumbed to Schmitty. He was Schmitty's mentor. <laughs> and eventually, Schmitty's the more responsible one then than him. Then Schmitty becomes his sponsor. <laughs> right. And then he comes in here trying to play the, like, hey, guys, come on, man. I'm just trying to blah, 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 blah. That's fucking bullshit. He used to tell us stories. No one really... This is why we need like a book, a lap, 
so we could put it in. Remember the stories he talked about where he was running the house mm -hmm. and he would put a newly sober guy in a hot box in the garage with no air conditioning and then ask him to share. And then he told us on this show, I don't know what episode it is, he would say, the guy would start to open his mouth, and I'd say, you're full of shit, mm -hmm. right? But Dick in the cup. Dick in the cup. Yeah. Right, right? And yeah. then at some point, he's helping Bizarro and Schmitty right. collect cans for extra dough. It's, <laughs> it's crazy, <laughs> man. I don't know and then what he comes in though. here, and he's like, hey, man, I'm, let's not talk about the past. Let's just, you know, I've got I'm it I'm built for this shit. <laughs> I'm like, what the fuck, bro? Why are well, you Well, yeah, this? you hit him when you said, man, you contradict yourself 10 times. <laughs> and ah. then, so, right, the, the thing that drives me nuts about him is that I really do care. Like, at the end of the day... Of course, and so do I. Right. And so do I, man. But, listen, man, I mean, what, all I can... With, I got to make this one point clear all right go ahead and i know he's gonna hear this <laughs> and that is that when you are i i feel my experience has been yeah when you are really ready and surrendered you have some humility about yourself right you just don't have shit to say right. and you know you don't have anything to say right and if you don't have that level of humility, it makes me question where you're really at with this whole thing. Right. Right or wrong? That's so right. And he was so defensive. Oh, I'm like, really, dude? Really, man? <laughs> I would look over at your face and I could see on your face like you would had it. <laughs> Are you, you know? And so that also, but that, that, and I say all that to say that that makes me nervous. Right. Right. It scares me. Right. Like, listen, man, I'm talking about somebody that's fucking 59 years old, man. Right. Right. Dude ain't 24. And you know what I'm saying? Right. And we're dealing with a youngster that's just being hard headed. You know, so, no, you're dealing with an oldster that's being hard headed. Right. So it, it, it I, definitely drew some concern. Well, there's concern because the kind of stuff that Big Lep is doing or anybody in his position, let's take him out of it, let's say. Mm -hmm. But at his age. Right. I mean, I was talking to I can't remember who I was talking to, but I'm like, dude, at that age, doing that kind of stuff, the, death isn't the worst thing that can happen to you. You could get like a stroke and be half paralyzed and be like that dude from Legends of the Fall and riding on a chalkboard and like can't talk to anybody and getting pushed all around, mm -hmm. right? And you'd be like that for the next 20 years. And still talking shit. <laughs> and still not listening. And still not listening. <laughs> so like, you know, for and it's hard. I, I also have to say that probably for a guy like Lep, it's hard because... Lep's body has allowed him to avoid a lot of consequences. Yeah, dude. I mean, guys have been shot 11 times, bro. <laughs> right. You know? Right. It'd be hard not to get an invincibility complex. Uh, well, yeah, dude. And I was trying to... Fucking... Yeah, dude. He's been through it all, dude. And he just, like, bounced up, like, ready to fucking... Bench press five hundred pounds and shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, pancakes in a yeah, bucket eat of twenty pancakes butter. and fucking bench press five hundred pounds. I mean, ten even, days out of the hospital. Even that last one he went through, he's still here. You know yeah, what I mean? He yeah. still got his jacket on. He made his somehow down here. Yeah. But you know what's interesting though? The weirdest part about that whole interaction for me was after the mics were off, old Blue Eyes tried to say something to him. What what did I say? Dude, so so we go through that whole thing and then we're packing up and, and then, you know how old blue eyes he's like pulling <laughs> shit. And then he turns to Big Lep. He's got a soft spot for Big Lep. Oh, I, do. Yeah. I do. Ever I really since do. LA Originals, when you right. cried right. and they spread yeah. the water on his face. Yeah. So I got uh, emotional. He did. No, but I think before that, even before that, I was uh, Big Lep's he's got a good heart. Right, he's got yeah, a good he heart. He does. Right. right, if he doesn't blow it up, well, on his wings. <laughs> anyway, listen. He goes. He goes. They let, but but you did get a little. What did you tell him? Oh yeah, he got. So to me, he got really defensive and got into a weird mode, a, a weird energy, <laughs> when when you started talking about his mom. 
Yeah, remember yeah. when I tried a different goes, What? <laughs> What'd you say about He's my like, mom? No, no, fuck that. <laughs> remember, like, first I went the normal Chuhan route, which is like, you contradicted yourself. That's it. I've had. And then I switched gears and was like, Mom, little boy. Mom, little boy, wounded Lepke. Yeah. And he was like, That's fine. I, I don't know. It got weird, right? It did. It got real yeah. weird. What did you see there, Sean? I mean, I felt like he was he he wasn't ready to go back into that stage of his life. He wasn't ready to uncover anything that that may have happened back then in in those early what do you, portions. What do you think that means in Lepke's recovery overall? Like, I I think a lot about this because well, what do you think? I think that if you're not willing to go back to that stage of your life and look at what happened to you and and kind of analyze maybe some of the stories that you made up about what happened to you at the, at those what your parents did to you. Mm -hmm. If you're not willing to go back to that, you're probably not willing to uncover like some of the real problems that you have. Sure. What do you think about that big Lex? I think there's a, a mochismo about him yeah. and this puffed up thing that doesn't let him even walk through those gates. I, when I was here, the strangest part about it was that I really sensed the little boy in him more than ever before. Like, like the, the boy that's in school that can just fuck around with the teacher long enough to just avoid. Yeah, he, he, because he regresses to that. He regresses to that right in front of us. And and, 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 and and when I was talking about the wound, I don't, I mean, I really don't know, right? I just know that every human's wounded. I mean, that's just... Right, right, right. <laughs> We're all wounded. What Generic. The fuck? Right. But I'm trying to figure out with him, like, w what is it? And I've started to realize that with a lot of folks, when their dad isn't there, it's easy for them to say their dad isn't there. I mean, that's just kind of like not that hard to figure out. Yeah, you're dismissing a lot with that when you do that, though, right? Yeah, because it's the an easy way to dismiss it. Right. But the mom that is there, good or bad, not saying anything, right? You know, for Big Lep, as I've gotten to understand and, and know his story a little bit, I've wondered for him what his mom really represents to him overall she's a great woman she got recovery and you would think on some level that that would mean that okay then for her son who admires her and respects her he would but he's not mm. you know and how and what do you make what does one make of that when you when you break that down what, what does one make of that is it Oh, your head moved. No, 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 I'm listening. No, I, I'm waiting for you. You might have the answer here. I don't I know. I don't know, no, no. I mean, I don't have the answer. I don't know. Sean? Don't look at me. Yeah, we're looking at you. I don't... I'm also thinking back to, like, what happens when you get shot on two different occasions five times? I mean, most normal people, they get, like, PTSD. I would think a lot of PTSD. Yeah. And I, I, and I have a feeling that Lepke's also, like, I know he touched on it a little bit, but that's traumatic shit, bro. I mean, people get shot one time or shot at and have PTSD. You got soldiers that have been in firefights and haven't gotten shot. They got PTSD. Can you get fucking shot eleven times, bro, on two different occasions? Yes, but what does PTSD in soldiers look like to the soldiers versus? So you're right; it's a traumatic experience. But Lepke's stories don't seem to necessarily contain, or he hasn't told us. Let's put it that way: the same kind of things. So when we talk to Danny um, um, Zero Dark Thirty, mm -hmm. and he talks about his buddies. And he talks about what that PTSD looks like. It's it's self destructive, and they're locked up. But Danny might also be able to tell you about his childhood. Mm. Mm. Lepke's telling us his story, but he's telling it from one angle. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's true, bro. He tells it very every single time. Yeah. That's you know, I mean, I don't know, man. I don't know who's built. When you're about to meet God, 
and you think you're dying, I don't know, dude. Like, I don't know who's that big of a man. You know what I'm saying? Like that shit. You know, you come out of the other end of that man, and I don't know. I think there's a. I think that. But his his story sounded re- okay. You're right, but the story that he tells sounds real realistic to me too. Because he says, "I swore off crack. I had some still in my mouth. I spit it out. I was." Done. And I've heard that, and that made sense to me. And he said he got on the bus, and before you knew it, he was down there scoring sympathy crack because he survived getting shot. And that's a real ad. And there's a, no, there's a, absolutely, there's a lot of that. But I guess, you know, I don't know. I don't know. I think this is, so, so. And, and the other thing I think, the other thing I want to say is this is that even how about prior to getting shot, I believe that if you use, the, you know, they, they say some are sicker than others. Right. When you use the way Lepke uses and go to the places that he goes to, yeah, there's something going on, bro. That much I know. Yes. What do you mean by that? There's something, something going on. Like, there's, there's a whole fucking bunch of shit that's not being even looked at or talked about. Are or, you... Are you saying that like you can be a regular addict and not go to those depths? Yes. I'm saying not all people go to those depths. And I think that the deeper the problem, the more severe it looks like on the outside. If you were to take the model that addiction is self-medicating, then if you are going to those depths, you're using extreme medication. You're obliterating. It's like the blackout drinker. It just doesn't want to be here. But it doesn't want to die. Well, or they don't care. You know? Man, I think about that. I, I have somebody blackout. real close to me that fucking is almost dying of fucking alcohol poisoning all the time. Just obliterating themselves. I have friends that drink and they drink a little bit too much. I have friends that drink and maybe they shouldn't drive. I got friends that, you know, they tied one on. I got friends that are able to tie one on five nights a week and get up and handle business. So they say. But there's a couple <laughs> that drink to blackout. Right. As soon as they start drinking, they want to just be black. They just want to be obliterated. No consciousness. Right. Because consciousness. Consciousness conscious is too painful. Painful. That's right. So if you put it into drugs, some there's some people that are just fucking jamming the needle, smoking the pipes and everything. I mean, I've grown up watching that. I've participated in some fucking use like that. Yeah. But I think that there's, and I know that I was trying to obliterate some things that were going on in my life or things I didn't want to talk about or events that happened when I was young or feelings that I just couldn't look at, you know, unwilling. And I feel like, you know, there's got to be some stuff like that for Lepke, man. Well, that's, I think, where I was trying to, See if something would come up when I talked about his, his his the little boy inside of him, which he doesn't want to acknowledge. He does not want to acknowledge that he's still a little boy. He really doesn't. I mean, he was resisting that, and he was resisting acknowledging that there were still some wounds there. And... When you think about the pattern that Lepke's living now, right, where you ask yourself, you know, where is he at as a father? And we've confronted him directly on the show, Mm -hmm. right? It seems to just kind of go by him. And then you ask him, maybe the father thing isn't the issue for him. But maybe, right, maybe he's always had to keep himself down to prop someone else up. You know what? And and I, and I, I, I can't get on him about the father thing anymore and it ain't right to Mm. because because i'm one of those guys that it is the father thing Mm -hmm. like that's the shit that makes me feel like the biggest piece of shit but that's not everybody right not everybody that's not their thing that's going to get them the first thing i go to is i start thinking about my kids and what kind of father i am i gotta get right for my kids like i gotta right this isn't okay for me not everybody's built like that right you know, there's people that can be away from their kids they don't know their kids they send right. money or they don't and they've got because like i could never do that i have right. to be with mine i don't right. care how or what or what those are my kids man they're my blood you know yeah not everybody's the same way so i can't 
expect another man to to feel whatever ways. But <clears throat> you know, man, I, I I I fucking I love the guy, bro. Yeah. I and he does have a big heart. He does. But I also want to say like it's it's the Lepke show, bro. And with the Lepke show, there is no room for anyone else. I mean, that's true. But I can't get too hard on on that because I have a little bit of that in me, right? <laughs> on the show, motherfucker, yeah. But in real <laughs> life, you fucking handle it. I mean, you know, I'm saying like, yeah. I'm talking about borderline. Like, I'm talking about like it's the Lepke show. No, I, I I realize that wherever he's at, it's him, dude. Yeah, at a meeting, at the house, in the car ride home. It's Lepke, bro. Yeah, and you know. And I know he does have a big heart, and he does care about people, but it, it's the Lepke show, bro. Well, so so that's the other piece of it, right? So when we we were doing some stuff with Big Lep a while back, there was that guy that was across the street, homeless, who was shouting shit at us. He was real annoying as fuck. Everybody was annoyed with that. Guy. Yeah, the only, Paul the only... was on the verge of going and cracking him. I was on the verge <laughs> of just going and cracking him. I would have cracked him. I'm too small. Yeah, and the thing and Lepke, is, is, I didn't want to get hepatitis. Yeah. But the thing is, is that Big Lep, on the other hand, he went over there, he talked to that dude, gave him his phone number, and extended yeah. his hand. And, yeah. it, and, it, and it transformed that situation. And Lepke has that power. He does, absolutely. And that's what drives me so nuts about him. Because yeah. I'm like, there's a lot of people out there that will really benefit from a healthy Lepke. You, we saw this. You... We did. I mean, this is what Esteban talks about. Right. It's so fucking frustrating with this guy. Right. Like, he doesn't know the charisma that he carries. When Sports. he walks in, I mean, nobody fucking, you know how many people call me about Lepke? You know how many people call Esteban <laughs> about well, Lepke? Well, look at the- even... How's Lepke? He's doing, how's Lepke? I mean, I, it doesn't stop. Right. Lepke can do no wrong in a right. way, you know what I'm saying? Right. But if he could turn that around. If he could just love himself, bro, a little bit. I mean, think about if you were Lepke's son. To have a guy like that as your dad. And when he's good, man, you're just like, you probably want to be around him all the time. That's my dad. But he can't. You know what I'm saying? Because his dad can't get out of his own way. You know, I was... Sad, if you think about it. I mean, my dad was in some ways not exactly like that, but he was like that. He was... A big guy with a lot of charisma who was drinking and eating himself to death despite all evidence that he shouldn't be doing that and that he would even be more successful if he didn't. I was watching him die right in front of me. So mm. powerlessness as a kid, that is fucking murder on your soul. Mm. When you finally accept, like, oh, this dude is going to die. And it, I've, I was a good son, bad son, hard ass Spoke to him nice, pretended to be weak, pretended to be strong, all yeah, that shit, right? Yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. And none of that impacted him. him. And at the end of it, you come away as a son. For me, I'm just speaking for me, mm -hmm. you come away from it with a question in your heart, which is, I guess I'm not special enough to my dad to make a difference. I'm fucking hurts. That hurts. Yeah, I'm... I'm very sure there's a point in time that my son could say the same thing uh that my daughter as well i mean that's the kind of shit that happens when you can't because you're powerless man even as a son you're powerless you know yeah um but I, you know juman i guess yeah you know and it would probably be double impacted for you with mom's situation you, you know? know you know with my analyst so i i'm in therapy t like twice a week now in my analyst i finally fucking came to the realization or understood that all this shit that i talk about guys when they say my dad wasn't there and i go into this whole spiel about oh you don't need your dad you could learn how to be a man on your own you know what really is going on i'm triggered because they you you had a mom yeah but that makes all the sense, bro. To you, but I'm an idiot. So I don't see it and I'm- Yeah, you're in to, you. I'm in me. So I'm avoiding the whole fact. <clears throat> That's have... exactly how it works. Exactly. That's exactly how it works. I know. 
That's why I'm in therapy because obviously I can't be giving myself therapy. No, that's exactly how it works, bro. If you can start applying that to all sorts of shit. Oh, come on. It's exactly how shit that's works. A life it's all underneath your nose and you don't even know it. Of course. Of course. I can see everything else. I can't see me. Exactly, bro. Right. So that's twice a week. My wife is like, look, <laughs> man, you're snapping more nowadays. I'm like, well, I got to get into it then. Well, you know what, Juman? You didn't have the level of, of, of frustration when I was first new Chumahan and new Chumahan was working with Chumahan as you do when me and you re, got reacquainted again. What do you mean by that? That's interesting. <clears throat> There's a cockiness, like an, and not a cockiness. You always had a cockiness. Did I? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You always kind of, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you were always kind of <laughs> smug and, you know. But no, there was a, there was a, a frustration in you. There's a frustration in you. It's like when you have a friend that's young and then as they get older, yeah. they start to turn into like old pirate. You start to kind of <laughs> see like you not that you're that, but that you had gained some of that in the time that we had been that's apart. Interesting. Sean, what would you And I don't know before you go to Sean, and I don't know if that is stuff that was always there and just growing. And if it wasn't addressed, it slowly becomes you. Mm. But I've noticed it maybe not when we first started hanging out, but kind of as we started exploring into working together and like me starting to see you at work and things you'd say. And I, I, I started definitely feeling a frustration in you. I used to cover it up for sure. I used to cover it up because I knew that it was a sign that there was something amiss, let's say, right? Mm -hmm. So initially I would cover it up. And then I think when we re got reacquainted, I got to a level of accepting that I am frustrated, right? Now, precisely what exactly it is, I'm mm -hmm. not entirely clear on. That's part of what the analysis is about, right? Some of it is me trying to explore who my right to have the mind that I have. Like my right to think the way that I think, not be constrained in people's boxes, not to be, you know, just because I think things beyond materialism and fucking bullshit or whatever, that's not my bad. It's that the average person doesn't want to put that kind of work into it. Mm. So there's peace that's that. Then there's a piece that's like, you know, there's no place for a son who never had a mother in this culture. There's no room to talk about that, really. There's, there's a huge, in fact, this society loves deadbeat dads. That's mm. the best thing because it explains everything. It allows the military to pick up these fatherless sons. It allows certain groups to pick up these fatherless Coaches sons. Coaches and athletes and right. cubicles, corporations, religions. Mm. They love that. But when the mother is a deadbeat, it's almost like I shouldn't even say that, even though that's the case in my case. It's almost sacrilegious. Mm -hmm. And so there's a frustration inside because I feel like I've accommodated everybody else. That's how I feel. Like with the old blue eyes and you, and I haven't talked to Christian much, so I don't know. But <laughs> I feel like I've accommodated and listened to everyone else's tales of woe. Mm. I really feel that way. Like everyone's told me like, oh yeah, that's not fair and this is fucked up. And, and it's been hard for me to feel heard even though I talk a lot and even though I put it out there, right? Somewhere inside, I don't feel heard. And what, Sean, you got to look. I'm just looking yeah. at you, man. No, no, no. What was the look? Well, I mean, I'm, I'm curious. Do you I have an insight going, into that? Keep going, man. No, I'm, keep going. I'm serious. You're I keep going. Yeah. Sensitive. Said, keep uh, going. All right. The I'm point to hear that your point. The point is, is that I feel like there isn't space for my experience as an American Indian for real. Uh -huh. I mean, dude, everywhere I go, I got to hear somebody tell me about a sweat. I fucking hate right, it. Right, right, I right, fucking right, right, hate it. Right. I went to the pumpkin patch with my daughter. <laughs> the guy taking the tickets goes, "Hey, are you Indian?" And I'm like, "What am I supposed to say to that?" Yeah, yeah. Then he goes. <laughs> that was I did a sweat lodge once. That's exactly what. Fuck I that shit. Right. So I, you know, and so when I talk, when I hear from other people, yeah. folks like African Americans or even he's, he's part of your Indian, your brother right here. My uh, my dad is Filipino and Mormon. 
All right, all right, good. Hey, all hey. Right. Oh, see, there you're doing it again. Yeah, see, you got to acknowledge that. I, got it. I don't even have never heard of that, but right. I'm like, hey, it's a red bro, red brother. <laughs> <laughs> right? I don't know. Fucking a, bro. So, yeah, part of the frustration comes from that, and then maybe part of the frustration comes from, all right, this is real. In the in analysis up to this point, I've gotten to a place where. I've acknowledged the anger that I still am trying to understand my fucking dad. After all these years, I'm still on the fucking hunt. And there's a piece of me that's mad at myself that I wasn't man enough to run away when I was like 13 or 14. Hmm. And my, my, my analyst was like, I'm just a kid. And I'm like, fuck all of that. The truth right. is, it sucked, it was hell, and I didn't have the courage and responsibility in myself to just leave and and do my own thing whatever that was right fuck bro i'm an angry dude <sighs> dude you kind of said it when you said that um um hold on one second. when you said that you <laughs> haven't been heard <laughs> oh. oh oh i'm sorry no that's a hard guy it's, it's, it's a oh, look at the never heard part yeah. i'm used to it <laughs> there, 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 that's all right. Don't worry about it. More important things than me. I used to come in second. <laughs> to get you. Okay. When you say yeah. that you haven't been heard, right? Um, it explains a lot, dude. Yeah, am I talking too much? I, and all well, stuff? I mean, on Eve, way bigger than that. Yeah. And for people, but here's the crazy thing that you don't like, bro. You were at Berkeley. Right. Then you're at UCLA. Then you get a master's degree in screenplay writing. Right. Then you're in show business working. Then you're like, oh, you know what? I'm going to go be an attorney. So you go to fucking Pepperdine and become a fucking law professor. Yeah. Now you have your own law firm and you're working on film and TV and fucking podcast. Like, like you're so fucking smart. Dude, you've done, you like went way over, dude. Yeah. Like. Yeah. Everybody who knows you is like, what the fuck is this guy? How does he like? Mm. Yeah, how mu how much of that do you owe to your father? What do you mean by that? It's an interesting question. You, like, I feel like he over he way overshot the mark, and he still you still feel like you're not being heard, or something's not like you can't make your place in society. Yeah, yeah. Fuck, you're right. Like that thing's enough. It would be for other people. <laughs> That's enough for other people. Like the average human being is not gonna go and do all that. And top of everything else, he does, dude. Like you're like a, an achiever. You're not even a high level achiever. You're like on some other level, dude. And I, I, I don't know how much of that is like, like what you're trying to prove, bro. I mean, I'm definitely trying to prove something. Remember when Luna came, right? And I was like, dude, you're going to read my hand until you tell me I can fucking fly. <laughs> yeah, right, <laughs> right, 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 right. So I'm definitely trying to prove something. That's true. You're yeah. like the smartest guy I know. I appreciate that. And I think that, and I haven't gotten that far in the analysis to really go through that. How much is that as though to move? my dad? Like, what do you mean? What, what does that question mean? Like, how, what are you asking? Aren't you like proud of the, like the things that he instilled in you? Am I proud of the things that? Well, I mean, you you wouldn't be the same dude with the same level without your dad. But he ain't questioning in that regard. He's he's more in the regard of like he still can't figure out why his dad couldn't pull his shit together. Do you feel like it's a reflection on you? I mean, definitely. I definitely have felt. Are you scared to turn into your dad? Well, for sure. I mean, why do you think I don't drink and I control my weight? Well, and that might also be the whole reason why you're accomplishing at high levels everything that he probably could have but couldn't. Well, that's definitely true. That is definitely true. I don't know if I'm doing it exactly for that reason, but I definitely see myself being accomplishing... Uh, Realizing my potential instead of resting on my laurels. What your dad did. Right. My dad had a natural intelligence and a natural charm, and he just kind of coasted on that. Right. And I'm investigating what actually caused him to self-destruct. Right? Like, 
What caused it? I mean, my dad used to suck his fingers his entire life. You know, I remember you told that. You know what, man? I'm going <laughs> to, I'm going to, I know that we got to wrap up. You know, yeah. there's something I want you to think about. Go ahead. Friend to friend. Yeah. And I didn't, and I'm not trying to tell you I came to this place and one day when you get older, you will. I'm not saying that. All right. Sounds but like I am telling you that somewhere that. around like 50, I started really, really, really understanding that I wasn't my dad, bro. Right. That I carried his blood and yes, he was my father. And for so many years, I believed that I was like a part of my like my dad in that way yeah but it, as i kind of came around 50 i started to let go of that idea and get clear that i'm not my dad man there's no way i could be my dad his experiences and my experience were totally different i am not him he might have made me and i might have some attributes but i'm a different human being man just like he was his own human being <sighs> why do you think about that man I will. And I will also say this. Part of what I do, too, is an exploration of what really am I capable of. Part of my frustration with my youth is that my dad and my family were not as supportive academically as I've seen other parents. I've had people who worked for me whose Asian parents like did everything they could to give <clears> their kid a, the advantage to get through law school. My family was not like that. My dad wanted me to graduate and get good grades but as a reflection to him. Right. He wasn't ready to help you out to do it. Right. And he wasn't a guy that loved knowledge for knowledge's sake. I do. I've right. come to accept that in myself. That's not a trick. That to me genuinely when i'm learning things i am fulfilled so part of when we're talking about like what is it mm -hmm. right part of it is also an exploration into what is my capacity i don't know what it is yeah i i hear you on that you know be careful bro of what that because you didn't have the support and somebody else did yeah that that don't get down on them for it man down on who the other people for having the support of their family and not doing nothing i'm not, not i'm not it. down on those people i'm more looking at since i didn't right i'm going to create a a life and a way of thinking i'm not going to hold myself back because other people feel uncomfortable by what i do that's the other piece i'm trying to embrace I have a natural tendency to people please. That's a natural tendency in me. Damn. And it's holding me back. I am. You people please? Yeah. I, I did. I thought your whole problem was you don't people please. No. On the show I don't people please. Uh-huh. Which but is in real of, life. Which is one of the reasons. But in real life, bro, you should see me do the political shit. Yeah, you were robbed. Hey, I will end it with this. You were robbed <laughs> of some shit as a child. But I will say this, bro. Yeah. I always tell like I tell close friends of mine, you know. Uh, me and Chumon, I say one of the thing reasons that me and Chumon get along so well yeah. is Chumon had a hard fucking life, man. <laughs> he didn't have it easy. And I tell people that are close to me, I'm like, he didn't have a mom there. He was raised by his dad on a reservation. His dad was fucking a hard motherfucking dude on him. Yeah. And and I had some hard times when I was young. And it's it's what it, you know, it's what it's where I feel like me and you meet in the middle. I agree. On that. a lot of things, you I know agree what I'm saying? That, yeah. But uh, I'm glad you're uh, seeking some help there. And yeah. uh, what do you call it? Analysis. Analysis. Not therapy. Yeah, yeah. Analysis. Therapy is for learning how to cope with a problem without really dealing with it. Analysis, analysis is looking directly at it. I'm liking that you're handling some analysis. Yeah, twice a week. Twice a week. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> All right, guys. All right. We're right. out of here. Yeah, we're out of here. OG Snoop in the house. <laughs> Christine. All right, we're out of here.